Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Grass Dealer Maulers. I'm Dave Forrest with my good friend, Harvey Lowe, and very special guest, Dave, Dave. Brown. Hi guys, <laughs> good to see you again. Nice to have you back, Dave. Yeah, nice it's, uh, back. it's great it's been, time. It's been a stretch with COVID and, yeah. and what have you, and closing of the hobby shop. It's probably been three years. Yeah, yeah. At probably least, at least three years. At least, yeah, not more, a little bit more than that, I think. Yeah. And, and these <clears throat> these videos originally started at your store, didn't they? Yeah, yes. it, it was a Break the thing with just me on my own. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, the I couldn't keep up with the speed of building the models. So <laughs> I don't know how Andy's hobbies does it. That guy turns out endless amounts. Yeah, he just doesn't sleep. He yeah. doesn't sleep. He doesn't sleep, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So then I, you know, I had to rely on you to come and fill in the, the weeks that I wasn't do it, doing it. So yeah, here we, we are. Yeah, you got me into this, right? If it wasn't yeah. for you. You know, and the garage studio models wouldn't exist really. I don't yeah, think. So, yeah, and I, yeah, and I think yeah. that Horner Hobbies was one of the originals. Yeah, uh, of doing, yeah. you yeah. know, the videos, yeah, the yeah. videos, yeah. yeah. And I think people have benefited, uh, obviously, by our comments. People certainly, you know, we got nice feedback all yeah. the time. And even, even you know, as, as recently as the later show, people were coming up to me and saying, "Hey, I saw these videos," yeah. and some of them were here, and some of them were back at the store when mm -hmm. we did them, right? So, yeah, you know, they, you know, people I think go back and look at them and. Yeah. You no, know, refresh sometimes I, if they see something they yeah. like, right? Exactly. I was speaking to a guy at the model show yesterday, and he said it's just a refresher. He, I mean, he went back to a video that we shot five years mm. ago. Yeah. You know, but yeah, it was a great. refresher on the Russian Matilda. So there you go. Mm -hmm. But I guess the techniques, sure, the, we change our techniques here and there and everywhere, the, what Chapin did or Francois Verlinden was doing. Uh, we've just sort of soaked all that up and here it is 2023 and we're you know and there's all, still yeah. a touch of all those guys in our models for sure absolutely and and then you know the the evolution of, of you know the all the new products that are out mm -hmm. right that just make it you know giving you options and make it easier yeah right it's just it's been uh, it's been an amazing uh, you know past four or five six years on that well you mentioned Shep Payne and Berlin did would you say then that the the techniques and artistry has is changed and is still evolving would, would you think or you know some people say well how much can you do with basic techniques I, I think it's it's kind of organically evolving would you think oh yeah, yeah. I, I think so for sure I, I been fortunate enough to see chefs recently mm. even though he's passed the stuff that he, he he must have been like the Wayne Gretzky or the Tom Brady of his time because <laughs> yes. I recently saw one of his that could have won a gold medal that day and it was a 30 year old model mm. so he, he's a little different because he was way ahead of his game but but like you said Harvey uh, we've all the things that won best in show say 15 years mm. ago they they would be winning silver medals today. Mm, yeah, indeed. You know, they might, yeah. yeah. And, and I think one of the reasons for that is is because of the videos. You know, people yeah, people, can, people learn techniques and they can run it back and replay it and then yeah. apply again and again and again. And and the books today and you have a, a guy like Mig who, you know, is front and center yeah. of it all and he, he like he he's. What, what can you say about the man? I mean, yeah, he, he kickstarted all of this. He really. kickstarted yeah. a lot of these pigments yeah. and the yeah. way that we weather things today. Mm -hmm. And hats off to the to make, mm -hmm. you know, he, he, and and Mike Rinaldi and the Tank mm -hmm. Art books. Yeah, the Tank Art books. I don't know when. when yeah, what year when would they was have that? come out with that? Uh, like years, early 2000, like yeah. 2005, 2006. Years? No, I think they were later than that. I think they were more 20. I want to say 2014, 2015. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm sure Mike's gonna <laughs> yeah. make but, a comment on when he brought them out. But you know what? I was in Tokyo just before COVID. I was in uh, one of the large bookstores, and I saw one of his books. But it wasn't just one of his books. It was it was in Japanese. Like they had Isn't translated right? oh, well. the title, and it was all in Japanese. I don't know if he knows, Mike. I don't know if you know that. And Chef Payne's books were translated. I think to twelve different languages. Yes. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's some amazing. some some high number like yeah. that. It's yeah. Terrific. Yeah. So. So Mig um, or, or my, uh, Mike Rinaldi, you know, when those tank are at least volume one through four, they also, you could just sit there and, and we all did it. We all opened that book mm -hmm. and sat there mm -hmm. for an hour, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. blown away. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The, I mean, you could, you could look at a series of images of what he did mm -hmm. and yeah. like, how did you do that? How do you, you know, how, and, and trying to think about how you could replicate that on your model. Right? And they were so well photographed. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. Mike obviously had a great yeah, eye yeah. or does have a great eye for yeah. photography. So 
the, the quality of the books was fantastic. Yeah. I, I, I still take, if I see a photo in his book or any other book that's really good, I actually take the photo of a photo right. on my iPad and I have it sitting on my desk. So I can, oh, okay, Ra you know, the book's kind of floppy. You're trying to replicate. I'm trying to replicate, yeah. so I have it right there and go, okay, that's what I want. I still got the book there. Yeah, yeah, right? absolutely. But I'm, I got two hands and I'm, you know, there's ways of... Just, and, you, and you don't want to muck up you don't want a, muck a Rinaldi up. book yes, either. Right. So, it's, right. it's, so it's a great yeah, idea to yeah, do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, uh, you know, yeah. and uh, so, yes, things have changed, but uh, we circle back. You know, mm -hmm. and like these are, um, you know, 2023 um, mm -hmm. things that I brought out. Yep. But I'm sure that in 2025, these these will be, you know, I won't even be looking at these anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> there's a segue. Look yeah. at these. Look at these. Yeah, it's kind of exciting to, mm -hmm. to think about what, you know, where the hobby the finishing mm -hmm. can go mm -hmm. right because you kind of think hey has it reached the peak yeah. and you know i think there's there's always ways you can push that right yes so. yeah for sure i mean we're not saying that those of you out there have to always do that it's it's having fun uh, but i think part of having fun is pushing that envelope to challenge yourself that's yeah. how i feel yeah, for sure i mean we're not saying that everybody has to do that but i think that if you're in this wonderful hobby it's there's always new things coming out. Well, you're gonna you're gonna enjoy the process more I if you're so. happy with yes. the product, especially the outcome. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. That, the outcome. Yeah. It's a big, sure. I mean, it's a journey yeah. to that outcome, but I think the outcome is a big determinant on how much you enjoy it. Right? If you're not this, happy with yeah, it, yeah. Look at this outcome, right? This is yeah. And and, and, and <clears throat> people out there in television land, they, they can't worry about success or failure at a model show because mm, yeah. that that yeah. is the farthest thing from. Yeah. From, I, I mean, you can go to a show, and you never know what's going to come on any given day. You you yeah. come there and you've worked forty hours on your tank, and you show up at a show, but some guy, he just he that, it was his day, you know, yes. and yeah. he just brought the most amazing looking tank ever. He read Rinaldi from <laughs> sentence to sentence, <laughs> and he puts it down. So the yeah. result is you end up with a silver medal. Don't, don't let that yeah. slow yeah. you down or, yeah. or do yeah, anything. I let that define you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I would only say to the, the to the guys that if it's the best that you could do, then don't worry about it. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you finished first or third or didn't get a prize. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're happy with what you've yeah. done. Absolutely. Yeah, that's the best I, I put these on my shelves, and I'm very happy to, and as you guys know from um, TV <laughs> land, <laughs> um, I always put bases with groundwork and what have you. I have a nice base for this one. It just displays better mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for our purposes today mm -hmm. on this base. Mm -hmm. But I have groundwork to go with this with, with a, a sort of Korean, because this is a Sherman from the Korean War. I have a little pond and I have a, a little dock scene that when I take this home today, I'm going to drop it uh, in my showcase uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in its mm -hmm. setting. So I always make groundwork and... Mm -hmm. You know, add to the models, but these models are both Tamiya. Mm -hmm. This is Tamiya is from probably 2000. You know, it's their 105 howitzer, <laughs> and probably with oh, two hours of uh, making weld seams and and making grab handles that are made out of brass. You know, mm -hmm. that you can grip. Um, other than that, this is a great little kit, and I've had those 3D printed light guards on both of them. Well, but, there's something new, right? The 3D. Yeah, the 3D. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That would have been 30, 20 years ago. Now, now, sorry, David, to interrupt. You mentioned the weld beads took only two hours? Well, at, at the most. Oh, I mean, really? pro probably less than that. Because on Sherman tanks or any photographs, yeah. really, because I, I, I don't have a place to go and visit yeah. Sherman tanks that often, but uh, there's one in our armory near where I live. But in any event, those old Tamiya kits, they never get tired. You know, they are the greatest, and once again, we don't have to get, um, I, w I don't want to say bogged down, but there's kits out there that have 500 parts in the box, and yeah, sometimes, yeah, 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 yeah. sometimes what happens is you are working on a, just building it for four weeks or five weeks. Well, that's why and I you know what? That, yeah. yeah, and then and some, get, you go to your local hobby yeah. shop and something else grabs you, and you're Thing you just spent five weeks on gluing together. You haven't even touched yeah. the paint yet, and then you're 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 sort of jumping, and suddenly at the end of the year you've got six that are partially built. Right. And my suggestion is buy Tamiya, yeah. 
build it in three days with the weld beads and the grab handles that uh, are made out of brass and just get painting. Well, that's why I, I asked the question, how long? Because some guys go, look at this. It must have taken them, you know, weeks to do all that <coughs> super detail. And you're right. Don't get bogged down in taking five days to do weld beads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, right? don't get bogged down in any of it. And then once, once, once you get to where your modeling is, you know, where you're satisfied with it, mm. then switch to those, uh, say, Ryefield Fireflies or mm -hmm. Ryefield mm -hmm. Shermans and, and really go to town and, and spend three months from top to bottom doing your kit and you'll have a blast, you know? But develop your uh, finishing skills first and then if you really have a super kit like Ryefield or whatever, just jump right on mm. it and, 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 you know, go to town. But and there's, and there's a lot of aftermarket. Like if you do want to <clears throat> detail up some of those old kits, if you want to spend like there's so much available yeah. out there, right? Like for the old Tamiya kits and stuff. Oh it's yeah. Easy and well, this Tamiya <clears throat> kit is, is probably 30 years old. But now I'm just gonna say, to be honest, these are Dragon running gear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I, actually, I, I'm uh, that's incorrect. That's from the Tamiya M10, that brand new M10 that they brought in oh, a couple okay. of years, because. One of the things about this kit is that the the bogey system with the original model is just a little tired. You know, yeah. it, it shows yeah. its age. Yeah. But so these are all these running gears from the M10. But um, yeah. with a with, with a half a day's energy. Yeah, th these are fantastic. fantastic yeah, those little, those little kit like for um, <clears throat> like to test out a <coughs> pardon me, test out a painting scheme or something. I remember I did that with one of, you know, I took one of the Timian Shermans and built it basically out of the box. The mm. M4. Yeah, and, and just that was my, kind of my first major all of yeah, that. It was our, yeah, and we combined that with a little diorama. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, so. so they really hold they really hold their age very they well. Do. They do. Did yeah. you replace the barrel on that one? No, like, no wow. replace nothing. <laughs> replace <laughs> nothing. Um, nothing whatsoever. Nothing is replaced other than the rain gear. Now, a bit, a bit of history on this. What is the, is it an M4? I'm not a Sherman expert. Okay, so this is an M4A3 okay. with a 105 okay. turret. And this is a same difference. Uh, later suspension, but it's a M4A3 105. Korean one. Uh, uh, Korean War. Yeah, this they, is World War II. And, and, they, and this, yeah, this is Battle of the Bulge. Ah, okay. Now, the Allies used this in World War II, hmm. especially at... Okinawa, but not the Marines. The Marines never used uh, this is, style of is suspension. That right. Hmm. So uh, wow. they would have used that, and there's very few pictures of this tank in the European theater of war. They're headquarter tanks. I don't know if there was 20 or 100, hmm. you know. Hmm. But there's so many good books out on the Sherman yeah. that maybe I've just forgotten. One of the other things, if if you're taking a look at this tank, is that the Marines never piled anything on the back until the Korean War. Only because they were fighting in the islands. The islands were a mile wide and yeah. you know, they went home at night <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to some degree. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, all these things on the back of these tanks are, are because, you know, you have to sort of carry your home with you, right? Yes. Your blankets, your, your, mm. your, your things, your comforts, you know? So, and the Marines in the Pacific at the end of World War II didn't have to do that. But once they got into the uh, Korean theater, Interesting. Um, mm. where it was, you know, it was a big country. It's it's not like a, a little island hopping in the Pacific. Right. So then the Marines had to carry their jets. It's, it's it's it. like you kind of need that historical context and detail, right, to kind of really situate the model. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, like important if, to... Like if... For instance, if I was to model this tank as a as a U.S. Marine, not not this exact version, but a Sherman tank, say U.S. Marines in World War II, if I had this all piled up on the back, yeah. that basically that would be incorrect. I'm not that picky a modeler where I'm going to shoot down on a guy and say the Marines never piled their belongings up on their tanks, yeah, <laughs> because somewhere you always know there's a picture in a book, yes, and that's it's an a little corner yeah. where yeah. where the Marines. Yeah, yeah. Carried everybody's but, for fifteen yeah. tanks. They pile everything yeah, yeah. on. Well, that's part of the fun is to try and do the research yeah, and kind of you sure. know find those those details. Yeah, to kind of really pin them all to a particular right. And sometimes time, it's a, and sometimes like what inspired me to do uh, this green uh, Sherman 
was I reading a good book by, by Sloan, is John Sloan, it's a, is that his first name? I'd hate to get that wrong, <laughs> but anyway, but it, but it's a, the Marines in the early stages of the Korean War. Mm, nice. And so what happens, and I think we've all done it, we've all read a novel or a book or mm -hmm. something oh, yeah. and then yeah. it just yeah. triggers, yeah. you know, I'm going to go build that tire tank tomorrow. I'm yeah. just reading this yeah. book. You know, you know what I would do? I, I would have that on my desk and while watching a, a Korean War movie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it goes exactly. the other way too. Exactly. Well, it's finished, but I'm going to sit here that's with part it. Of, that's part of the fun of the hobby, that's right? You see fun. something, you get motivated. Yeah. Right? It takes you in a bit of a different direction. That's yeah. that's a, it's, it's fun to go down those rabbit holes. And this is also to me, you mentioned? Yeah. This one's to me. This one's also to yeah. me. Mm. I, I, you do a bit of, but you do a bit of kid bashing here and there. Right. Mm. Yeah. Like to me, it doesn't have that actual kid. <laughs> I had to steal the okay. turret yeah. out of this kid. Ah. Uh, Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. and, and and there'll be a little bit of brass here and yeah. there, but yeah. it, but I don't go to town on it because uh, I'm 63. My eyesight isn't what it used to be, and uh, and uh, you know what? I got stacks of models. I I want to get the building. Stacks of so. models. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're so yeah. So so I don't want to get bogged down. That's why I buy to me. <laughs> so so total summary. How long to do this whole, excluding the groundwork, to do this one and this one? How, how okay. Long? So. Probably ninety days. Okay. You know, give or take, maybe mm -hmm. a little less. Yeah. Not 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 like ninety days each. Not yeah, yeah, not yeah. total. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, but ninety days is three months. I could have probably done it, you know, a lot quicker. Yeah, you, probably, you, you probably yeah. got other projects on the go yeah. at that right. time, right? It's not just yeah. that. It's did, not did, not did you do these two at the same time? Well, almost like back right. to back. Like I did yeah. the marine one first, and then this one, which is still in progress, because yeah. this being European theater mm -hmm. war, this is. Got all the baggage to come. Because what I find that helps me is if I'm doing two of these, I would do stage at one point. You know what I mean? If, right. If, and rather yeah. than do one and do the other, it just helps me with my time because I hate cleaning airbrush. So I time <laughs> it so that, right, you're doing yep. the green on the, oh, I might as well do the green on this turret, you know? Right. Sometimes. Yes. And, and the greens, you know, like they're slightly different. I mean, I mean, this would be, a, uh, it's 1950s, so this tank would have been six years old by the time it, you know, so, so, there's, so there's that effect. I mean, these were all stationed in Japan after World War II. Hmm. And um, really? then the Marines took them over when the Korean War got cooking. Yeah. So yeah. Um, they would have sat in the sun. They, were, they weren't indoors. Right. Did they get a paint job after World War II? Ah, why would they? You know, yeah. maybe, but maybe not. Yeah, you know? that, that's, see, I learn something yeah. new every day. That's a good, I that's a good that's point. A good point right? Yeah, so, so, the, so the greens on yeah. this would be slightly yes. different. I can see it. So, um, and, and what is your like go to for all of drab? Like, how do you what's my your... all of drab is 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 not 60 XF 62 by Timia, yeah, which is their all of drab. It's I find it's just too red and dark, yeah, you know. So, I go to uh, Tamiya numbers again XF 81, which is their RAF green, okay. Uh, mm. You know, came out when mm. the big 30 second Spitfire came out, they yep. brought out a green. Yeah. So that's XF81, mm. and I mix a little bit of XF4, you know, to get, you know, it, uh, the the yellow, the yellow bit of yellow. Yeah, yeah, you can see yeah, it. You can see it. Yeah. But then the key though is I mix a little bit of gloss with the colors, so you get that eggshell y type finish. Yeah, yeah. I, I I I just gravitate towards that eggshell finish. So the gloss, yeah, the gloss would also be to me yeah, the little gloss. yeah, yeah the X twenty two, and then and, and then you don't like you don't coat your models with anything after. No, I don't even coat them when I deco. You know, I, huh. I can lay down the decals because there's a hint of eggshell in the paint already. I don't spray it with gloss and then put the decals. On. See, I'd be afraid to chance it. <laughs> so to me be too. Honest, me to be too. Honest, I'd yeah, be now I have to chance it. Yeah. It, 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 hmm. But so it far, work, yeah. so, so far it does. But you can't argue with the finished product. Right? No, you're looking at it bounce off the light, and the the semi sheen is kind of nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's it's Battle of the Bulge, of course, this tank would have been snowed on, and yeah. dried, and yeah. snowed on, and dried, and so there's going to be a little dampness on it too. Mm. You know, just just like yeah. my tanks aren't glossy, but they're yeah. definitely and, not. And glossy. we'll get some close up shots of these of these tanks. But I'm just looking here, and, and some of the, like the the very subtle streaking, like it's just look. It looks layered. It looks, it looks wonderfully done, there. Beautiful. Oh, nice. thank you. Mm. You know, and, and there's a well. You know what? All I can suggest is to is to stay with the, your uh, books, 
those who, who and the Sherman Tank, I mean, I think there's more books on that. Sherman Tank than there is on Gettysburg. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. so I'm the books. Yeah. I mean, maybe gardening is way above <laughs> those two combined. But um, anyway, yeah. stick with your references. Yeah. Don't just jump out mm-hmm. and, 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 you know. Look at that. Yeah. So. Beautifully done. Mm. Yeah, so what I'm going to do today is I'm, as far as modeling goes, I'm just going to focus on the on the front ends. I'll, I'll turn these around so the camera can see. Mm. I'm not going to focus on weathering a Sherman. I'm going to focus on putting the mud on the Shermans. So uh, I'm going to take the uh, front plate of this and basically turn it into a late war battle of the bulbs type of nice. uh, thing. Yes. Nice. Now those all those kinds of things would carry on throughout the back of the tank, and the, but. You're going to be able. If I isolate, you. I think the viewer will get a lot more out of what we're doing, Agreed. and then he can. Yeah, extend that back. Yeah, that back the rest of the tank. Yeah. So, and um, I think I could do it in about two episodes, and then later on in the season. I mean, I as most of you guys know, I live far away now, uh, in miles, about uh, two hundred miles north of Toronto. But I do have my, my children here, my grown-up children, uh, who are in their 30s. So I do uh, come down to Toronto for mm-hmm. mm-hmm. five or six weeks. Yep. So what we'll do is we'll build in, as, as this project goes along, yeah. we'll build in a few days yeah. to come here yeah. and do some yeah, episodes. Yeah. And, and um, you know, by the end of it, maybe we'll have four or five yeah. sure. fantastic yeah, episodes. Yeah, that's, that's what we do on this channel. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so Beautiful. Yep. yeah, we'll have some fun in yep. 2023. Will be uh, you know sort of my return to the video. comeback year. Yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah, and yeah. then you won't be a special guest, but you'll be a regular guest with a yeah. regular. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, fantastic. Like Absolutely. you did before. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So okay. And and maybe depending on um, timelines and, and mm. how much I come back to Toronto, maybe we could do some groundwork. Mm-hmm. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. That sort of stuff. But we'll we'll just concentrate on the yeah. front end of that. Now, I, I guess uh, just to, to start off, what I've done with this tank is my RAF green, XF eighty one, a little bit of uh, yellow added, a little bit of gloss white, and a little bit of gloss. You know, just regular mm-hmm. clear to me a gloss. Mm-hmm. So just just to jump ahead and uh, so that someone doesn't just. Uh, spray with 81 and say all right put the deck on and here we are mm-hmm. this has got a little touch of a few little things in it and what i'm going to do momentarily is just give it a little people put mud on but they forget about the mud that arrived three days ago mm-hmm. or right mm-hmm. on the shores of the beach or on the you know in the farmer's field that was two weeks ago mm-hmm. some guys apply the mud just on here you know they they just cake mud on here but they've forgotten that this tank didn't come out of the showroom right this thing is landed in norman no one not this particular version but these things arrive on the battlefield and yeah you know yeah. There's, there's, there's a journey there's, yeah there's yeah. a journey yeah. Yeah. you know there, there's seven towns and yeah. you know yeah. Yeah. miles 200 miles of gravel and stirred up farmers fields and all that sort of stuff yeah. so yeah. so what i'll do is i'll give it a little this is the thing of buff. Do I have my little buff here? Here we go. So I'll, I'll just give this just a little mist. Just a little mist. Mm-hmm. And that's your yeah. base. Like you do yep. that the base. That's that. interesting because I do that after. Oh, is that right? Yeah. yeah. So I do it. So I'll get the mud on there first. Right. Kind of get it to a point where I like kind of blend it in, and then this like a light light mist of a dust colored buffer. I think it's a buffer or something. Yeah. Something mixed with buff. That's interesting. You do that first. Yeah, isn't you it? Well, to blend you know, it. Yeah, 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 exactly. So I kind of blend it at the end. I, I do what Dave does. Yeah, yeah. we're all different. Yeah. 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 And what what will happen is sometimes we look at our what we thought was a finished product. Yeah. But it just needs yes. tweaking. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Yeah. And, and I think every great artist, every, every it doesn't matter if you're on canvas or, or plastic models or, or you know quilting or something. Sometimes you just you just know something isn't right. Well, you know it's yeah. not. Well, it's that eye, right? It's, it's your eye. eye. You That's have. the whole thing. It's, it's the eye. eye. Yeah. Looking at, okay, is it done? What do I need to do? What do I need to enhance? And it's kind of, you develop that you do. by just doing it over yes. and over again. Yeah. Yes. So, so yes. to your point, 
at the end of the what I thought was the end, I may I may say this needs a touch, mm -hmm. just a, a touch of buff, you know. Uh -huh. I, yep. You know, so so why don't I? Um, yeah, we'll let you get set up. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll get set up, and and then what we'll do is we'll give it a light thing of buff, and then and then I know this says asphalt, <laughs> AK products, but uh, this asphalt is a great mud. And everybody's going to say, oh, are you nuts? It's jet black and it's semi-gloss. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to I'm gonna add a few things to this asphalt to nice. turn it into a farmer's field mud. Uh, nice. Okay. And and what's neat is, especially on Russian armor, you know, they, yeah. they, where, where those things traveled yeah. is unbelievable. But anyway, bogs and, like the poor Russians, right? <laughs> They're known for their mud. Yeah. Holy yeah. smokes. <laughs> And, and what, what's great about what I'm going to show up, as far as the mud goes is it, 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 it's you can use it in a contemporary setting. Unfortunately, with the, with the, the things going on in Europe right now, yeah. on uh, YouTube or wherever, we're seeing a lot of tank uh, yeah. warfare yeah. Yeah. and a lot of kicked up gravel and mud and slush and we're just coming out of winter. So, so this might, you know, the things that I show you today, you can apply them to your Ukrainian settings and dioramas and yep. what have you like that too yep. mm -hmm. yeah. so mm -hmm. um and, and i use asphalt versus this ak make train uh, dry mud wet yeah. mud yeah. this side and the next but when i show you guys using the asphalt you'll you'll just it's just a i'm not a fan of the mud that looks a little bit like hershey's dark chocolate yeah mm -hmm. i was gonna ask just, you that why this yes yeah. yes, yes so i i haven't yes. been to europe in the cold winter mm. i've been to europe but you know in the summer you know we all went to italy yep. right in yep. the, the nice june weather yeah. but so uh, when i say i uh, i'm not a fan of the hershey's chocolate type of mud it's 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 just a preference mm -hmm. it's, it, mm -hmm. that might be the way and the color i mean ak is in spain yeah. I, I believe it's in spain and so yeah. they know they know the color of the groundwork in spain or, or in europe and it's and, and it's just my preference. It's it's, yeah. it's not the. It, it's interesting because I I use so I use like I have like they do like a dark brown, mm -hmm. and that's what I use. Yeah. But, but I like it. But to your point, I like going dark with it because you can always lighten it up, whether it's with a dust coat mm -hmm. or with pigments or mm -hmm. something else. Right. Right. But starting. So I'll be, I'm very curious to see how this yeah. how this works with with that, with yeah, that so black dark gray yeah. color. Yeah. And and the thing that inspired me to get here was. Uh, Lester Plastic mm -hmm. recently did a Sherman tank, a late war uh, Sherman tank in a farmer's field. Fantastic model, yeah, really yeah, he's, terrific. He's a very model. talented model. Yeah. And, he, and he went out, uh, he went at length about. And next time I'm shooting this, I'll, I'll bring the article. But um, Lester used the the product that you're talking about, and it, and it looks terrific on his model. And and he lives over in the mm -hmm. neck of the woods, so he knows better than I know. I use this because I'm in Canada, yeah, and these yeah. are the things that I see when <laughs> yes, I travel in the yes. wintertime. So, yeah. basically, you could say that these Shermans are actually in Ontario, <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> based on the yeah. groundwork and, 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 you know, the well, colors. Yeah, but I mean, the groundwork looks very, very convincing, so. But I find that if you guys are ever, like me, stuck in traffic in Toronto, what do I do? I look at the mud on the trucks. Yeah, and absolutely. And it 100%. Right? It gives you yeah. an idea not only in the color, but where it should go, how is it drying. Yeah. Uh, and if you go on a rainy day, you, you can see the mud, the new mud, the old mud. Have, is, right? Have we all not sat in our cars and then <laughs> yeah. there, there's a dump truck in front of you with the mud flaps. Oh, and you, and you, 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 you take a picture <laughs> from your, yeah. from so your you're windscreen a yeah. of his mud flaps. You're a <laughs> we've, all, we've all done that. Yeah. We've all done it. Yeah, yeah. we've all done it. Uh, back to references, right? Yeah, yeah. And and so maybe it's because of the Ontario mud flaps on dump trucks. I've come up with this. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know, and I, I'm not too worried about it. Lester is a fantastic Lester Plaster yeah. is a yeah, fantastic mauler, so yeah. he's not wrong. Yeah. yeah, I'm probably closer to wrong. <laughs> using, using asphalt versus what he uses. But anyway, in any event, I'm going to demonstrate how right. I do it. All right. And, and here's a little. Um, I just did a little. Bit of groundwork with the same product. Well, look now at that. it might be hard to see when I uh, added a little 
puddle there. Yeah, I've added some, sauce to some Sherman tracks. It's got texture to it too. It's yeah. got thickness to it. Yeah. So I'm going to show the audience how to, you know, come up with this. Beautiful. So there's a little sample here too. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And, and it's acrylic. So it's great yeah. because it, it, I can use the uh, Tamiya products, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the yeah. different thinners. Uh, yeah, it cleans and, up in water. And, and, and water and, and what have you. It cleans up nice and it doesn't smell and mm. things like that. So Beautiful. All right, guys. Well, yeah, so well, let me we'll put a little coat of buff. Yeah, and, yeah we'll um, get to it. Yeah, I'll get to it. Okay, sounds good. We'll be right back. <laughs> 